At Noja Power, we're dedicated to making the safest, most reliable switchgear available today, and we're really glad to have you on board. Today's quick video is a really simple introduction of how to install one of our single triple OSM reclosers. For further detail, we always have the user manual available in the door pocket of the control cubicle. This covers the long list of advanced functionality available within this system. But of course, if you want to talk to tech support, the phone number is on the front of the escutcheon panel in the control cubicle. The Noja Power OSM Recloser System consists of our auto reclosing circuit breakers. We have three tanks, one, two, and three, and the control cubicle that's down lower on the pole. The recloser tanks are connected to the control cubicle via a control cable, which is connected to the junction box at the back of the device. Now, at Noja Power, our design philosophy is to integrate the full system that we can test it at the factory and be sure that it's going to work for you when we deliver it to site. So, in our full system, it's completely integrated, and the only connections that you need to make are the connection between the recloser and the control cubicle and the auxiliary voltage supply at the back to give energization to the control cubicle itself. You've now received your OSM single triple recloser and we've opened up the crate and as you can see, we've already attached the mounting frame that holds the tanks. You'll also see we've also partially dressed the device and we've installed the surge arresters. The surge arresters are mounted to specific points that have been masked at the time of powder coating. That allows the ground plane to travel through the tank and out the ground stud. We recommend what work can be conducted on the ground should be conducted prior to lifting. This would include installing the HV tails and the auxiliary primary connection point and all the animal guards prior to lifting. So to complete the dressing, we now need to remove the control cable and the auxiliary VT primary cable. So that there will be attached to the mounting frame with cable ties. We now have our control cable, which connects the tanks to the controller. And we also have the auxiliary primary side of the VT. So this VT primary side connects from this point through to the bolt that's being supplied on the palm. So now we've, we've uh, screwed the auxiliary primary onto the uh, voltage transformer. And you'll note we have a locking nut on the bottom. So we now need to tighten the locking. So we have on the bottom palm of the first pole a bolt for fixing our auxiliary primary. So now we've fixed the auxiliary primary of the VT. For the sake of this demonstration, we won't be installing HV tails. You at this point now would install your HV tails and attach the bird guards to the top of your bushings along with the bird guard on the top of the auxiliary VT. Here we have the six bushing bird guards and then we have a single smaller auxiliary VT bird guard. So now that we've fully dressed the recloser ready for installation, we need to prepare the pole. So to do this, we need to unbolt the universal mounting plate which we use as a template for drilling the pole. So now we've removed the universal mounting plate. Now, as you can see, this plate's designed that it can be fitted to either end of the mounting bracket or the middle, and that would be dependent on the type of installation that you do. So now we're going to use this bracket as a template and take it up the pole and mark the pole for drilling. We need to allow for M20 bolts, and we can see in two locations. Now we've used our universal mounting plate as a template to drill the hole. We bring it back down and we now need to fix it to the point that we're going to use for the, for the installation. As mentioned, we can use this end, the far end, or the middle. For the purposes of this installation, we're going to use the middle today. You'll note that we have on the mounting frame, cable tied, a bag of bolts. These bolts are used for fixing this universal plate to the main mounting bracket. Prior to lifting, we need to remove all the fixing points that have been used to bolt this recloser into the crate. So 
So now we're ready for installation. We've removed all the saddles holding the recloses in position. We've attached the universal mounting plate. It's important to note when mounting in the centre position, we've used the same bolts that hold this particular phase onto the mounting frame. We have four lifting points located on this device and it's marked with yellow marker. So we attach our D-bolts to these four points, two on the mounting frame and two on the tank. So when you're ready to lift the device, make sure that you do it gently at first to ensure you can maintain a level of the full single triple system so we can lift gently. Now that we have the recloser installed up the pole, it's a great opportunity for us to familiarize ourselves with the features of the unit underneath each of the recloser tanks. You'll note on each of these tanks that there is a switchgear interface box. Now when this device is shipped from the factory, you will note that the cable is already connected to the junction box at the back of the device. But if during any of the service conditions that you need to service that cable, it's a very simple procedure to clip and unlock each of these individual ones to change the cables on site. Now that we have the recloser installed up the pole, the next step is to connect the control cable between the recloser and the control cubicle. The junction box connection point is at the back of the bracket where there is a Harting plug receptacle for the control cable. To connect it, lift the Harting plug protector and move the latch out of the way Line up the pins and plug it in, and then lift the Harding plug latch to secure the device in place. All cables taken into the RC10 must be sealed and secured with glands to maintain the IP rating of the cubicle. It's best practice to confirm voltage and current is present and within the expected ranges once the bypass switch has been opened. The installation should be checked before final commissioning. Check that all the HV connections have been tightened and inspect the earth wiring and confirm it's been connected as specified in the user manual. Inspect the LV wiring is complete and connected safely. Check the LV supply is on. If possible, conduct some manual trip and close operations from the panel to confirm operation. If the feeder is energised, check that the voltage and current readings on the panel are correct. Connect to the RC10 with CMS software package and load settings as required. Conduct any other commissioning tests as specified by local regulations and requirements. Thanks for joining the Noja Power user group and I hope you found this video useful. If you have further questions, we're only a quick call away. The phone number is in the control cubicle. We look forward to working with you.